This is Pat Obi at Purdue University, Northwest. Welcome to my presentation on logistic regression model, also called logit model. In part one of this presentation, I discuss some theory and concepts. The logit model, which in my view is underutilized, has wide applications, especially in the behavioral sciences. In general, binary outcome models such as this are particularly useful when modeling categorical variables in the context of a linear regression as you see right here. For example, consider a home loan application and think of what factors might determine a customer's odds of having his or her loan application approved by a bank. The explanatory variables may include the applicant's income, down payment, and age. These variables are quantitative in nature, but they may, uh, they may also include categorical variables in the model, such as gender and ethnicity. These are typically referred to as dummy variables, and we can implement a dummy variable uh, multiple regression to obtain these uh, parameter estimates. Here, though, our focus is on the dependent variable y. For example, we may be interested in learning if a loan application would be approved or not, given the uh, specified customer characteristics right here. In this instance, therefore, y becomes a binary variable, taking on categorical values of 1 if loan application is successful, zero if not. Other examples of questions with binary outcomes include what factors determine if a company pays dividends. Here, Y would take on the value of 1 if firm pays dividend, zero if not. What factors influence a person's decision to travel for leisure? Here, when you interview a tourist, y would be equal to 1 if that tourist is um, traveling for leisure. Which customers are more likely to buy a new car? Now, when you survey the customers, y would take on the value of 1 if a new car is purchased by a given customer. Which demography is more likely to vote in favor of a new legislation? Here, Y would take on the value of 1 if the person that you have interviewed voted yes, otherwise no. What factors determine baby birth weight? And here, Y could take on the value of 1 if baby is born with a low birth weight, 0 if not. And of course, in each of these cases, uh, you'd have to specify the explanatory variables. As in the case of uh, baby birth weight, explanatory variables may include the genetic background of the mother and child, age of the mother, nutrition, prenatal care, and smoking, stuff like that. And as in the case of this lead example, what factors determine if a loan application is successful? And again, Y would take the value of 1 if loan application uh, is approved, 0 if not. And of course, you can flip it uh, the other way. You can choose that Y would be 1 if loan application is denied, 0 if it is approved, in which case your interpretation of the sign of the coefficients would be with would be the other way around as well. <coughs> now in modeling Y, uh, we're going to be mindful of the fact that anything that causes it to rise from 0 to 1 increases the odds of loan approval, as in the case of our example. Now, in another video presentation, I showed how we could use the more familiar and simpler, uh, actually, linear probability model to model the, uh, this relationship. So that if, for example, we take a sample of 100 loan applications from some financial institutions, you will um, take on y would take on the value of 1 for an applicant whose loan was approved and 0 for an applicant 
this application was denied and for each of these customers we're going to obtain data on their income, down payments, age, gender and ethnicity as I've already mentioned and then we're going to run a regression on the model. Unfortunately, we found some serious limitations in the use of the linear probability model. The most serious of which is that we could wind up with estimated y values that are that are greater than one, as I show here, or even negative, <laughs> as I show here as well. Such outcomes simply don't make sense since the probability of success cannot exceed one or be in the negative. We are interested in what makes y change from 0 to 1, or if you like, what increases the odds of loan approval, what increases the probability of success, that is. So in developing the logistic function, the two conditions that must be met are, one, that the probability function must be positive, and two, it must be less than 1. As such, the value of the function must be constrained between the values of 0 and 1, consistent with uh, any other probability distribution function. So pursuant to that, I show here the logistic probability function with one explanatory variable. It can be represented uh, using the EXP notation or using the more formal exponential notation, right, as I show here. Now, as you can see, this expression satisfies our two conditions. Not only will the quotient, which is the whole term, remain positive since the exponent of any number, negative or positive, is always positive, but also any number divided by another that's slightly greater than it would always result in a value of less than 1. But why do we add 1 right here to the denominator and not any other positive number? Now here's how I explain it. If um, this numerator, if this term here is a very large number, say 100 billion, for example, adding 1 to that value, to that 100 billion, that ain't going to make much of a difference. And so when you divide the numerator and the denominator, you're going to wind up with a result equal to 1, which is the highest probability value. If, on the other hand, this term here is exceedingly small, infinitesimally small, let's say 0 0.000000000, 000 000 000 000 000 000 000, you know where I'm headed with that. Now, adding 1 to it, you're going to come up with pretty much the value of 1. So that when 1 in the denominator divides into the number above, which is pretty much 0, you're going to wind up with 0. And so you see the bound to be exactly 0 and 1. Now though, to make this a linear model, at least for purposes of implementing the logistic regression, we can do some algebra to this uh, probability function, to this logit function here, to come up with what we call the logistic regression model right here. Now, this is our beautiful finale in this derivation. The left-hand side of the equation is the natural log of the odds ratio, where p in the numerator here is our probability of success, and 1 minus p in the denominator here is the probability of failure, as it were. So as you can see, the odds ratio is going to go up as the likelihood of loan approval in the numerator, which is p right here, increases. But we'll get back to that in the results interpretation in the second part of this video. Now, for anyone who's interested in the proof as to how you get from the uh, logit function to the regression model right here, um, you can pause this video a little bit and uh, look at the math of it. 
Now we use the method of maximum likelihood estimation to obtain the parameters, parameter estimates of the logistic function, which are the intercept and uh, this uh, coefficient b1. The method of maximum likelihood, as you may know, is one where you look for the parameter values that maximize the likelihood of obtaining the observations with which you're working. Now, after running the logit regression model, we then calculate the estimated probabilities. That is, the probability of success. So these terms here, little b sub 0, little b 1, these things here, these are estimates from running the model. And so we hook them up into this, and then we obtain our p hat, which is the estimated probability value. And from the result, we can also find the percent of correctly predicted values. Right here. And which is, in a way, a statistical measure analogous to R squared, the coefficient of determination, if you recall, in the case of a linear regression. And here, we're going to look for cases where the predicted Y value right here corresponds to the actual Y value right here and right here, and you obtain them as a percent. And of course, the higher that proportion, that percentage, uh, the more useful our model is in actual predictions. Finally, when interpreting the um, coefficients of the model, we must be careful not to interpret the magnitude of the coefficients as we would in a linear regression study. Instead, here in logit regressions, we're going to be interpreting only the sign of the coefficients. For example, if the coefficients b1 right here, as in the case of uh, this simple bivariate model here, if it is positive, then it means that an increase in the value of x increases the likelihood that y, the probability of success, is going to be equal to 1. Conversely, if the coefficient b1 is negative, then it's telling us that an increase in the value of x decreases the likelihood that y is equal to 1. In other words, it decreases the probability of success. In part 2 of this presentation, I'm going to demo an empirical analysis using eViews. Thanks for watching.